Is Todd English the king of Walt Disney World seafood? <laughs> Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And you are watching the Theme Park Foodies and we are back at the Dolphin Resort, one half of the Swan and Dolphin Resort here at Walt Disney World. Uh, one of the few resorts on Walt Disney World property not operated by the Walt Disney Company, right Sam? Yeah, so it's run by Marriott. So you cannot um, get a passport discount at these dining locations yeah. or use Disney gift cards. And if you are parking here, if you're taking a car, you will uh, get a parking validation from the restaurant. And you have to ask for it. Yes. Because you don't want to pay $36. Yes, park. but yeah, you have to eat at a sit-down restaurant here and they will provide you a parking validation. It's also a pretty short walk or boat ride away from Epcot or Hollywood Studios. We've been going here a lot the past year. We actually dined at Rosa Mexicano twice. We did one video on, but we've been back to at, a, at another period. Uh, we also recently ate at the fountain during Christmas time. Yes, and we actually learned at the fountain that we couldn't get the parking validated. Yes. Which was a bummer. <laughs> yeah. And then we also ate at Shula's Steakhouse about a year and a half ago. So this is the last restaurant in this resort that we haven't eaten at. It's Todd English's Blue Zoo. And if you can guess, a Blue Zoo is an aquarium. It's like fish-based food. I'm always at seafood restaurants, and I'm not a seafood eater. You got married at a seafood restaurant, <laughs> Paddlefish. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things on here. They have a two-pound lobster that I feel like is out of my price range. It's about $95. Yeah, and um, there's like a seafood tower that's like $110, <laughs> which I don't think you could enjoy on your own. So. Yeah. Well, Sam, you're not a seafood fan, so anything that you have your eye on? I mean, the chicken. They do have some steak, too. And what I'm actually most looking forward to it's kind of silly. It's a Swedish fish mocktail. Ooh. Because Swedish fish is one of my favorite candies. And I feel like all the Disney restaurants, they always have that um, pink London spritzer and agave yeah. garden. They always look <laughs> the same mocktail yeah. everywhere. Like, so I'm excited to have something different. Yeah, try a different mocktail. This is obviously Todd English's, one of his signature restaurants here at Walt Disney World. So I'm excited to be able to try the food out. We've been eating a lot of celebrity chefs recently. Mm -hmm. And also it's very close to Flying Fish at the Boardwalk Resort. Boardwalk Resort is walking distance from here, so I'm interested. I'm probably going to compare the two as I'm eating, and I'll show you guys how to get there if you park at the front. Are you ready? I'm ready, and ready? there is a dress code. Oh. I'll put it up on the screen. Yes, yeah, so guys, we gotta wear, I got to wear a collar today. If you enjoy no the, tank tops. No tank tops. And if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our dining experience at Todd English's Blue Zoo. All right, so if you park here, you have to kind of bear right if you're facing the building and walk into one of these very interesting, consistently moving interior doors. I always feel like I'm gonna hit the wall. The front of this building looks like it could be the Illuminati headquarters. So if you see a giant pyramid at Walt Disney World, that is the Dolphin Resort. And the ceiling actually is supposed to look like a night sky. You can't really can't see it now because it's too bright out, but we'll show you on our way out, hopefully. As you walk past that first room, the check-in will be to your left and you'll be greeted by this Beautiful crystalline chandelier, giant chandelier, and some dolphins, or dolphin fountain. The quick service here is actually a coffee shop called Fuel, and it will be to your right as you walk in. And to the left of the fountain will be a bar. As you pass the fountain on the right will be Shula's, but we need to head past Shula's and down this escalator because Todd English's Blue Zoo it's on the first floor and left-hand side, right after the escalator. All right, so if you're looking for stroller or EV parking, it's like tucked in this back corner over here. Look at this, like water fountain as you walk in. All right, we're heading in, it's so blue. Bar will be to the left-hand side. Definitely has a modern aesthetic. They have an open kitchen plan. All right, we are seated. I did want to bring up that Blue Zoo is a AAA four diamond award-winning restaurant. They also have an award-winning wine list. Um, not a big wino, but they won the Award of Excellence from 2004 to 2023. I don't know who's given out the award. I'll tell you one thing, these napkins look like four-star fancy napkins. All right, let's unpack this menu. The vision, it's about supporting community 
farmers because they feel like they put more care into what they sell. Obviously a lot of seafood appetizers. We're hearing the shrimp cocktail and tuna tartare are very popular, as well as the tepin seared sea scallops. We are looking at one of the flatbreads as well since Sam isn't really the biggest fan of fish. They also have a signature clam chowder, which I feel like is speaking to me a bit. Some specialty mocktails like the Zuberry Serenity. Hello Brother, like they have a whiskey and bourbon flight. They're actually known for this uh, Blue Zoo Simply Fish, which is like a mix and match type of selection. Um, I'm hearing the uh, Cobia is kind of like a snapper and the Corvina is like a flaky type of fish. And then you can kind of mix, you know, or not mix, but pick what type of topping you want. You can even supplement a nice lobster claw in there. You can always enhance your meal and they do have some interesting looking sides. We decided to try out the risotto tots, but we also hear the tempura green beans are really good. And I was looking at this Gulf oyster spoon bread. All right, first things first, Sam, you got yourself that signature Swedish fish mocktail. You know, they, they say it could- so fancy. They say it could be for kids, but I mean, I think it's fancy for adults as well in this little fancy environment. What's in this? Um, I think it's just, it's Swedish fish syrup and like soda water and topped with some Swedish fish. I'm excited. I wish Disney would do like more drinks like this on their menus. Yeah, like fun Instead mocktails. Just, like laminades and stuff. It's so good. I may have to add another one. I love Swedish fish and it tastes exactly like Swedish fish and soda. Not too sweet either. I'm gonna give this a nine. Wow, that's a super, that's really high for a mocktail. I really love Swedish fish and the taste is spot on. The syrup is, it tastes exactly like the candy. All right, so they actually have a bread service here. You would hope so in such a fancy restaurant. Those four diamonds, that means it's got some bread service. I feel like there's some good bread service. Three types of bread. Yes, so what is this one, Sam? Lavish. And this is an onion type of bread. Onion. And this is ciabatta. Onion focaccia and ciabatta. And then even the butter is fancy. What type of butter is this? I think it was a fennel butter. Fennel butter, okay. I'm gonna try out this onion bread first. I guess I should just take a bite out of it soft. It's just onion flavor. The ciabatta is warm. I got that soup too and I'm looking forward to dipping that soup in that bread. All right, let's spread this on here. Well that is a very whipped butter. All right. So unique because of the fennel. That's like a light earthy flavor and all these breads are like different. I feel like this is like bread that could please the whole family. That's what I like. I like the variety. They look like they're different textures. This is more of a cracker. Yeah, lavish is like a cracker. Let's see how it dips. So my favorite's the onion. Probably not for my stomach. My mm -hmm. mouth likes the onion. The fennel is like whipped, melts in your mouth. Nice earthy flavor to it. Um, and then they're all really good because the ciabatta has a good crust, soft, pillowy interior with a lot of air holes. This is like kind of a more dense type of bread, but it has a good little bite from the onion. And then the other thing is like a nice elevated cracker. I'm gonna give the bread service like an eight. I think it's a really good bread service. I think it tastes fresh, delicious, earthy. Yeah, so far really good. All right, so we got our appetizers. This looks very fancy, Sam. It's the mushroom flatbread, right? It's a mushroom madness with, with mixed woodland mushrooms, first time, fontina cheese, roasted garlic, and Calabrian chili. Let's see how that cheese pull looks. Well, I kind of pulled it already, <laughs> sorry. Uh -huh. Let's look at a little pull. Yeah, there's there was two. Yeah, I thought yeah I didn't. I thought you realized it. No. Ooh, it has a little kick from that Calabrian. Oh, there's a little spice in there. Chili, yeah, like there's these little flakes, so there is a little kick, but it's not. You know, I could, I think I could handle it. It has a good crust. Ooh, I like the mushrooms. It has you know an earthy taste to it. The fontina cheese complements the mushrooms. It's kind of like a more Fontina is like has a little bit of a nutty flavor, so I think those work well together. But the spice is throwing me off a little bit. I almost feel like when you do get the spice, it kind of takes away from the flavor of the mushrooms and the cheese, which I think are good on its own. If I would get this again, and I would ask them if they could just not put the flavoring chili on it. I don't think it. I don't think it needs it. It's not too spicy, but I just don't think. It needs it. I'd rather just have the mushrooms and the cheese. I would have this a seven. Good crust. crust is very important. Yeah, New Yorkers are big on the crust. It does look delicious. I can tell you this, Sam. This is the best looking clam chowder I've ever had. The bowl is gigantic. 
Um, it has house-made oyster crackers. It's light and brothy. You can see there's whole clams in here. I've never had a clam chowder with whole clams. And it's a right. salt-cured bacon. Ooh, okay. Oh, look at that clam. Started, ooh, he just popped right out, that boy. All right. I'm going to try to get all the flavors in here. Look at that. So, I've heard some people find this dish a bit salty. I think it's the right amount of salt for me. I can see that because you have soup and you have bacon. Two very salty type of items. I love the crunch because the house-made crackers, they don't lose their texture. You know what I mean? They still crunchy. The, the soup, it's not too thick. It's very light. It's an excellent clam chowder. One thing I will say, maybe a little bit of pepper. I feel like you got the spice and I didn't. I like a little pepper in my clam chowder, a little bit of hint of spice, but it's a delicious clam chowder. I'm still giving it an eight. The oysters melt in your mouth. And usually you could tell like a good oyster when it's not too chewy. These are like perfect, no like fishy flavor, which is what you want in a good fish restaurant. This is an excellent clam chowder, probably one of the best I've ever had, solid eight. All right, so dinner has been served. Sam, you of course got the chicken, not being a seafood fan, but what's in the chicken? Okay, so this is the marinated brick chicken. It's honey mustard brined Bell and Evans chicken breasts. And then I have some dark meat uh, croquettes, a lemon butter almond couscous on the bottom, marinated tomato, then it says crispy skin white bean puree. It's on the bottom, and then that is like a roasted chicken. You. Ooh. Fancy chicken. They really just this chicken up. So you try it without the jus first, then with the jus? Yes. And it, they do uh, present everything very nice. It has all tomato. The honey mustard brine is like so subtle. At first I didn't taste it, and at the end I just have a little honey mustard flavor. It's really nice. The chicken is juicy. I like the crispy skin. The lemon couscous kind of complements the honey mustard. I feel like it just like gives it a little zing to the dish. The tomato stays fresh. I'm gonna try one of these dark meat croquettes. That's a star. Yeah, right? That sounds really good. Really good. Need more of that. How many do I have? <laughs> Only have three. Those are good. They just make like that as a meal before. Do you want to try some of the jus? Yeah. Oh, a roasted chicken jus. Let's pour that on. I said that right aggressively. <laughs> this is a really good chicken dish. Sometimes when you go to a seafood restaurant and you get the chicken dish, it's kind of bland. But this is not the case here. I really, I really like this a lot. I like their take on it, and I like the little surf meat croquette. The couscous, there's so much flavor fresh tomatoes like they did you know I feel like thought went into this I'm gonna give it an eight wow another eight I don't think anything's gone below has anything gotten a seven yet I'm trying to think I don't think so we well, know your flatbread I think you give a seven too. all right so I got the seared ahi tuna this is togarashi seasoned ahi tuna avocado wasabi puree crispy sushi rice dakon scallion slaw and soy ginger emulsion so I think the this is the emulsion. I'm not saying that right for sure, as usual with me. So let's try this out first. Look at that wasabi on the bottom. It just seems like kind of like elevated sushi to me. Try it with and without the little sauce first. I don't know what this is. Oh, wow. This is fried sushi rice. Oh. Very light fry too. All right, so let's get the wasabi. Let me get all the flavors in this bite. I feel like there's definitely some creativity going on with these dishes. Yeah. Let's pour this on. Ooh. Ooh. It's like deconstructed sushi, but like super elevated. So much tuna. Look at the size of this tartar. It's huge. Look at them. There's three, like four big chunks of it. The fried sushi balls are, fried sushi rice balls are delicious. Wasabi isn't too spicy. It happens with wasabi sometimes. Man, that is good. I'm gonna go nine with that. I would order this again in a heartbeat. I think the fish has been shining to me, but you said even your chicken was really good too, right Sam? Yeah, I, I 
it's got flavor and it's nice presentation. Yeah, that's how I feel with this thing. It's got flavor, beautiful presentation. It's a little bit different. I don't think I've ever had this anywhere else. So good. All right, so we had to get one of their sides. These are the fried risotto balls. They're just fried risotto, white truffle, and a sassy romesco. I guess this is the sassy romesco. Sassy. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what sassy romesco is. Right, I'm gonna try it with and without the romesco. I wouldn't say dry, but definitely needs some more, more, some more, um, Sass? Some more sass, yeah. Let's try the romesco out. Crispy on the outside, good sharp flavor from the truffle. Romesco I thought would be spicier. I thought it would be a more, more prominent flavor. It's very light. More sassy sauce, I thought it would be. These are very good, well prepared. I would give them a, a seven. I think they're very high quality. I like the entree more, but these are still very good. All the desserts are fifteen dollars. So they have a molten chocolate cake, a cherry stone, which is like it's like a cheese mousse with Michigan cherry compote, a chocolate mousse trio, a citrus meringue tart, and a baked berry buckle. I have no idea what I'm getting. They all sound so good. All right, so we got the dessert, and I think we made the right choice, Sam. I think we did too. This is their chocolate mousse. They have three different types of chocolate mousse. They have dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. This is a chocolate meringue, and then each of them has like an accessory, right? Yeah, so the dark chocolate has a candied orange on the bottom, the white chocolate has lemon praline pecans, and the milk chocolate has a cherry jelly, and then that's the chocolate meringue. It looks really good. There's also a little macaron right there on the side. That's macaron. We get, each get half. So you're gonna, you're gonna start. Dessert, and then it came and I was like, I think I do want dessert. I feel like that's what happens. You gotta start with dark. I always start with the least sweet and most bitter. Is this gonna be one of our favorite desserts in Disney? It's really good. I'm always a fan of chocolate mousse. Well, there's like this jelly orange on the bottom. It goes so good with it. Oh my God. That is good. Am I trying all of them? Well, if you want, I'll try all of them. Oh my god. You can just read off of that one. That is delicious. It has such a great texture. You're gonna leave me some? <laughs> stop, 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 stop. That's good news. I don't even, I don't even have the right words to describe it. But I'm sure you'll have plenty of words. You're more wordy than I am. I am. I'm gonna give it a nine. Wow, I mean, you're that taken back and you still wouldn't go 10. That's like typical Sam. You could have passed out and you would have been like, nine. <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever in my life, nine. All right, so I wanna try a little bit of each one. So I'm gonna start just with like a little bit of taste. Mm. Did you get the orange in your bite? I did, nice light citrus hint. I love the crunchy texture on top. Let's try the chocolate macaron. The chocolate goes really good with orange. Milk chocolate. Look at some of that jelly. Nice light, creamy flavor. Definitely less dark. And it's such like a it's such a smooth texture. Alright, let's try it. You know what I don't like about the white? That gold. I hate edible gold. It adds no flavor. Just to be fancy or aristocratic. Oh wow, it's good. Though. Wow. All right, let's try the meringue. No, it's good. Definitely one of my favorite desserts. I've seen. The huge chocolate mousse fan. I love. That there's different levels of bitterness, and I, I would recommend if you're eating this, start with the most bitter because it almost clears your palate out. So you're more sensitive to the more sweet flavors towards the end. And they get creamier too. For the dark chocolate isn't as creamy, but then you get to the milk chocolate, that's just a nice, nice creamy flavor. And then different levels of tartness and levels of citrus flavor. Because you have the citrus flavor in the dark chocolate, and then you have the tart flavor in the milk chocolate. Really good. Um, I'm gonna go nine. I'm gonna stay with the nine. You know what? No, I'm gonna go 10. I'm going 10. It, it is, it's a delectable dish. It's a good dessert, and it's fun to share. $15, it's a good shareable dish, it's a good size, great plate, delicious food. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a 10. All right, that was a really good meal, probably one of the best we've had at the Swan and Dolphin before. All right, so that is it for our dinner at Todd English's Blue Zoo. I wanna say, this is my favorite place I've eaten at the Swan and Dolphin. 
for me. I think for you, Sam, you said you like Il Molino at the Swan, you like Rosa Mexicana over. Yeah, just over because that. I can eat more things at those restaurants because I don't eat seafood, but still, with it being so seafood heavy, I still found things. I did really, really enjoy this meal. Yeah, uh, what was your favorite thing that we ate? It's definitely dessert, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my entree was just so delicious. It really tasted like elevated, I mean, because it was sushi, it was tartar, which is kind of like a raw-ish ahi type of tuna, but it tasted like elevated sushi. It was so delicious, it's so unique. Um, I think your your dish, I had a my, bite of that too, was so good. My chicken dish was really good. Mm. I wasn't expecting much from it, but it it exceeded my expectations. Everything tastes of quality, the bread yeah. service, the mocktail, yeah. entree, dessert, mocktail the flatbread. Just like a Swedish fish. The service, the atmosphere. Yeah. I thought it was very sexy. Oh. <laughs> like it just, it felt like it had this like these vibes yeah well um i do want to say the interior decor felt like it almost felt like flying fish kind of stole that decor a bit yeah it, it felt did, very similar it did but i do feel like this was a little more darker vibe yeah it just had like a lot of mood lighting and it just felt more adult than some other places i did feel adult i would say that yeah but there were kids in there and i did want to say that although there is a dress code i did not see them enforcing it there were people in some shorts t-shirts so fishing shirts, and which I'm fine with. I'm not, they can do whatever they want. Just when we read online, there was one. So we just want to, you know, let you know how much they're enforcing it, which didn't seem like it, it really were enforcing it much. And although you can't get a pass holder discount here, you can get a DVC discount. Yes, which we, I didn't realize, yeah. Well, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. Up to the people who find the video subscribing, it also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time when videos come out, which is when, Sam? Every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. Don't make the days count. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. This is the part of the video where you can see our members <laughs> strolling the end credits. If you want to become a member, you can for as low as $1.99 a month. Get your name in the credits here. We also have other tiers that offer exclu exclusive perks like early videos. This will probably be one of them. Really is so kinetic at this resort. There's so much like moving water. Really is very picturesque. It is. It's not very Disney themed though. Yes, it definitely it's, feels it's, Marriott. It, it, you can tell you're in a Marriott, but I still, it's yeah. in a great location and it does have great dining. And you still get like the resort uh, benefits, like the transportation and the early yeah. park entry. And so, and it's probably about a moderate price for Disney, but you have pretty much like deluxe amenities. And you can use Marriott points too to book your stays. Ooh, didn't know that.